Yeah, yeah. You know what's kind of crazy is it's it's doing something nice for somebody else, and it's it's not very common. Mm. Like that's what's a trip is like doing nice to others. It's like wow, why did that person do that? You know. But it's right. like imagine if we were all nice. Kind of like what you do though, huh, Brenda? Be nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm nice. I try to be nice. Try to spread it a little. Yeah, ready? Yes. Let's yep. rock. <sighs> I am so ready. Everyone has a unique gift. And Mike, the creator of the One Life Podcast, believes most people don't know how to use their gifts or what they are. Mike wants you to see things from a different perspective. Oh, by the way, um, yourself. The after One I do my Life intro, you're going to do the, the AV, world through art, fashion, well music, and film. Yeah. It inspires, motivates, and creates positive energy, love, Should've and compassion to all communities and creates an equal playing okay. field for all. On the One Life you're Podcast, ready for it. they cover topics like yeah. building relationships, overcoming adversity, Diversity, habits I'm of healthy right. people, and much, much life? more. We only have one life to live. Be yourself and stuff. live your truth. A toy and drive that even podcast to your playlist. That's the number one in E Life. Oh Available yeah, on like Spotify, like Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the One Life Podcast. I am Mike M I C Reed. And as always, I got my co-host Diana Gotti doing hey. it the Gotti way from the AV Wellbeing Coalition. And today we got with us Brenda Hernandez from Pretty Little Poppy Marketplace. Hello, hello. What is going on? But first, we're going to check in with some community news with the AV Wellbeing Coalition. What you got for us, Diana? Well, I'm all, when you say what you got for us, I was like, oh, offhand. But you know what? <laughs> I will say this. Um, I was asked earlier, how do they get a hold of us? Yeah, well, you can actually about. find us on Instagram under the AV Wellbeing Coalition. And we actually have a website. You can also go ahead and find us under the AV Wellbeing Coalition website. And we... We actually are a community-based program where we can reach you out or we can reach out and do workshops for schools, for businesses, team building. So we do have a lot going on and there will be more to come. <laughs> I wasn't right, too hey. ready, but... <laughs> no, but you know what? That's perfect because yeah. a lot of times we got to promote the uh, IG as well. Right. That's where a lot of people are communicating. So I, I just want to give um, some information on community news about the um, AV Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. As you guys know, I am a director over there. So, <laughs> But we are having our 26th annual um, installation gala March 3rd. So tickets are on sale now. General tickets are $100. VIP tickets are $150. Tickets are limited. I think we our space was 250 and half the tickets are already spoken for. So oh, get wow. your tickets now. Nice. Oh. Again, it's March 3rd. Uh, it's the 26th annual installation gala. And the theme is Alice in Wonder. Land. Last year was pretty amazing. This year is going to be epic. I'm telling you guys, like I'm a part of the committee and uh, what we got planned in store. The moment you walk into the place, you got like it's going down the rabbit hole for real. Oh, so if you watch, nice. if you watch Alice in the Wonderland, you know what I'm talking about. The moment you step into the place, you're going down the rabbit hole. So oh, that, so it's going to be a party. Fancy. I, we got to hurry it's, up and get I've our always, tickets. I know. I, I've always wanted to go to one. I've oh, always wanted yeah. to have one. One day I'll have one. But A gala? Well, uh, yeah, I've never been to one. Oh, okay. Well, got to come to this one. Yeah. Got to dress up all fancy. Yeah. I don't dress fancy. So. You're fancy. You're yeah, fancy you in your own way. I'm fancy in my own way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So anyway, this uh, episode is sponsored by Money Market Business Solutions. Check them out at uh, moneymarketbusinesssolutions.com. And let's get into it. Right. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. So, Brenda, how's your day going so far? It's going amazing. Amazing, so amazing. Great day today. You mentioned earlier, right before the show, that, you, that, that being on a podcast is something on your bucket list. It is. It, it was. It was. <laughs> it was on my bucket list. Now it has been checked off. Um, I have things that I, so when I added my bucket list, it was stuff that I never thought I would do. So it's like there's stuff on there that I knew that I would want to do and that it would draw me to do it. And then there's things on there that I just felt like it was a dream to do, but I didn't know why I would even be on one. Mm -hmm. Like why would why would I be on a podcast? So um, I added that one. I'm on one. Well, yeah. you know, a funny story is, and I've told this story a couple of times over the last few weeks, um, because mm -hmm. that that day, or I should say that night that I ran into you at Don Sal's when I was having dinner with Andreas, mm -hmm. you walked by the table, and at the moment, like, I, I've, I don't think I've ever personally met you, but I, I knew who you was, and I 
knew of you, right? But the moment you walked by, you said, you're going to interview me one day. <laughs> I did. And at the moment, I didn't know. <laughs> I, I, I was just in my head like, who is this lady? And I looked at Andreas <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. Like, people actually watch the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, but then I reached out to you a couple of days later. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was like, you got to come on the show. Yeah. Because, like I said, I knew of you and I've always wanted you on the show. So, I mean, you you, you was on my list. You was on my list. I mean, Diana um, Gutierrez from Eventually Vits, trust me, we had a, we have a list, even though she's not on this episode, on this season, uh, we had a list of everybody that we wanted on the show and you wasn't on that list. Mm -hmm. Um, But once you did that, I was like, I got to push her up and she got to be on the show. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. I think I had a little bit of liquid courage to say that though. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Because, no, but when I, I would, I would watch her. I would watch your stuff and I just, I love what you do for the community and how you just, you let people see their gifts and, and, and it's like, we have gifts and it's like to just be reminded of what they are. Cause sometimes we see our gifts, but we don't really see our gifts. It's like, we know we have something special. We know we have something to offer, but to have that confirmation from somebody else is, is a blessing in itself. Well, I think we we can you can say maybe savoring the moment. Mm -hmm. We don't tend to savor it as much, you know. Because when Mike was saying that, I I think you guys kind of do the same thing, but we lack a little bit in in grace and savoring the moment and smelling the roses. No, you know, and I was actually reading one of your no, it wasn't a post. It was a video you did, and I forgot with who. It was a, a young lady you was doing a video with. And you were saying how you don't do this for the money, like you don't get paid for it, like you do it for all your vendors. Mm-hmm. And Diana's right. Like, I think, and I said this to you earlier, like, we, we both have something very similar in common. Like, we do it for our community. Mm-hmm. Like, I do this show, like, I don't get paid for this. Like, I do it because I want to tell, tell, like, your story. Like, today, you're the star of the show. Yeah. Like, because we want to tell your story because we want to inspire other people. Like, you know, because we all go through our adversity and we all have, you know, gifts and we go through things in life. But a lot of people see us, like, with our businesses and they go, oh, wow, like, you're very successful and, you know, I'm trying to do it. And they go through all this stuff and they don't realize, like, they can do it. Mm-hmm. Like, because we all been through it, you know. No, I agree 100%. I, I always say if, if, if you would have told me a year ago that I would have a store and that I would be able to help people and, and do what I love, I would have never believed you and to be able to do it now and to have that platform it's 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 amazing you know it's 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 a blessing but no and i love it i love the fact that you opened up that shop for all your vendors for all the small business um, owners because you're like you're like a macy's and a jc penny's you know for small business owners and that's incredible it's amazing Corey from lancaster promenade calls me an incubator yeah (laughs) oh it's the truth you just build up these 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 things but in reality it's 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 you know, they do the same for me. Right. If it wasn't for the vendors, I wouldn't have a store. Right. You know, so it's it's very much a village, a village definitely. But you're you're, you're just creating that incredible space for small business owners to where, like yeah. a like I said, like a Macy's or a JC, they won't give them the, those opportunities, right? right? But you just gave like so many people an opportunity right now in a space to like grow and be bigger. I mean, it's just amazing. I love it. Like I love Thank that you. shop, and it's a nice shop too. It's like I've been in there a few times. It's a nice Thank shop. You. Yeah. Pretty much anyone, I think uh, anyone that comes your way, you you really do welcome them. Because Brenda, I didn't really know you. And I was recommended to just apply and reach out. And I thought to myself, like, I don't even know if she will even give me a chance. And when we started to talk, I realized this is where I need to be. But you gave me that push. Right. You allowed me to believe in myself. Could it may have not been the balloons. I think it was simply just our conversation. But that reassured me that I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. And you do that. You're igniter of hope as well. You guys really are. Mm -hmm. And I said that to Diana and I say it all the time to Mike Mm -hmm. and I'll say it to you. And I say that a lot to you, actually. (laughs) I said, not everyone wakes up every day and opens that door. Mm -hmm. You do. You invested into Pretty Little Poppy, where I saw, like, my God, if there was more people like you, Brenda, can you only imagine? But you put it into action. You applied all of this, and you gave these people hope. 
you know, I took so much pride in, yeah, I'm a vendor over at Pretty Little Poppy. When I first <laughs> met Mike, that's that's for the grand opening. Mm -hmm. I ran into Mike and I was like, oh, yeah, there's a store, Pretty Little Poppy. And she has so much going on. And and the kids, the kids. That's it. I think that was my, my attraction more my to you. But it, I don't think it was so much the balloons. It was that. And I've always said that to you. From minors to majors, right? Yes. So, oh yeah. No, you know, you know what? Um, thank you for bringing that up because that yeah. is something that I did have in my notes. Um, again, I can't get online. So yeah, I got you, Mike. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I saw that, and I saw some little boy that was at your register. It was a video that you posted the other day, yes. and that really inspired me, and I love that. So, I mean, tell us about that. What is it? So we have a nonprofit. Um, the actual nonprofit is called the Carpenter's Daughter. Within that nonprofit there's different programs one of the programs is minors to majors um i used to work at penny lane i was a teen case manager and um it was about transition youth like what happens after 18 okay. you know and so um that was always put in my heart just to help help youth you know get ready for the future and a lot of times too with kids if if kids come to their parents and say oh i want to be an artist it's not always, okay, let's go do that. Let's go get you the supplies. It's, it's sometimes it can be like, oh, well, no, you have to go to school. You have to do this or be a doctor or mm -hmm. do this. And, and so um, I always just like, there's a creative a gift in a lot of people that want to pursue that as a career. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like if, if it's a dream in theirs to, to do that, then, then let me help you accomplish that dream. So we started minors to majors and um, we teach them life skills. We help them. They never pay for anything as far as like pop-ups and stuff. We teach them customer service, how to engage with customers. Um, they learn the register. They also do stuff that's not fun all the time, sweeping and, and cleaning and seeing, do you really want to be in a life of retail? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a business owner? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, they sit there and they see the money and they think the money's amazing, but there's so much work behind the scenes and there's so much more that they have to do. And um, it either ignites this flame inside of them or they just kind of like, oh, you know, maybe it's not for me. Right. But um, and then, too, because we are a nonprofit, it allows for us to be able to give them um, resumes and build their resumes and yes. experience and stuff like that. So we have we currently have 12 kids on the program right now. And it's just it's exciting just to see we have one. Uh, her name's Lizzie. And I remember when I met her, she couldn't even say hi. She was just so shy and so quiet. And now she's like, can I go to work today? Like, I need to do, can That's I work amazing. the register? Can I do this? And <laughs> you just see them engaging and you see them growing. And it's like me at my age, I need support. You know, it's hard to run a business. So it's like, if you can just be that support for these youth and just teach them how to fish, they can go so far in the world, you know, and they're gifted. Yeah. They're so amazing. So, yes, that's one of our programs we have in there. We also have our Blessings for Babies, which we help essential needs for um, babies with formula or drives or uh, refer them out to people that can help them. And then we have Medal of Prayers, which is um, my dad had passed away. That's why that's why Pretty Little Poppy exists is because of my dad. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Meadow of Prayers was, you know, my daughter would go to the cemetery to take flowers all the time. It's so expensive. We would go there weekly. And she's like, I can do this. I can create these. And then one day we got a call from Hallie Olson and the mom, she just lost her one-year-old child. And she didn't want to take these flowers home. And then they were like, can you do something with them? We ended up breaking them down, these arrangements. And then we made smaller arrangements to give out to the whip you know, for new moms who have babies. So it's just oh. spreading that love, making something of grief just to be able to spread a little bit more joy and love into the world. So lots of stuff we do there, but it's exciting. Wow, I didn't even know all that. That's amazing. Okay. And I, and I love the fact <laughs> that, again, you know, the minors... What is it, minors? Minors to majors. majors. Yeah, the majors. Um, I love that because I've always said that um, you have to give kids the exposure. Because they see everything on TV and they see all stuff, all that stuff, right? But if you don't give them, like you said, the experience or expose them to something, then they actually really never know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. But once you're exposed to something, and Steve Harvey talks about this a lot, once you're right. exposed to something, it's like you got to have it, mm -hmm. right? So you, you're right. It ignites that fire in them. Yes. Like the little girl, like, she's, can I go to work today? Like, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. They, that. they, they want to work. So that's how they do it. They do volunteer hours. There. And um, because originally it was all about pop-ups, but 
you know, you come, you do a pop up and you get money, but it's like you got to put the work in it too. Right. So then they would sit there and do volunteer hours. So if they don't volunteer, then they can't do the pop up. So it's kind of a reward for them mm -hmm. to be able to build up their businesses. And we have a wish list for each of them. So as we get donations and stuff, we're able to give them wish lists. We had, um, you know, down from tubing of lip glosses to, um, you know, storage bins for yeah. them to be able to, to, to do their pop-ups and stuff. So every dollar counts and every dollar is multiplied in such an amazing way, you know? Yeah. So it's exciting to be able to, to, to help these kids out for sure. No, it is true because my, you gave my daughter a chance, you know, but it, it was, I think, a little bit more me, like, come on, do something, right? Because some of these kids just want to stay home and do nothing, mm -hmm. you know? And they, it's like time goes through. And I had to tell my therapist about that. And my therapist finally told me, it's not that you're doing anything wrong. And if she's bored, that's because she's boring, <laughs> you know? And that, just, and that just hit me, like, you know what? It's so true. But the fact that you gave her that chance, you guys gave her shirts, you gave her a platform, you gave all of that, you ignited her. But what you also gave her was that psychological safety. Mm -hmm. What you don't know is like anything Brenda. It's like, oh, how's Brenda? The first thing she was worried about is, am I not going to see Brenda? So what you're doing for them is being that mentor, that big sister that some of these kids lack in. Or some parents might not be able to provide that attention, but can bring them there. And you can now be that mentor for them, that stepping stool. Like believe in yourself. And you do. that's when every time I go to the store, I'm like, I have to get Melody herself. Because it's that connection that she has to you. I don't even have to tell her that she sees the bag. But it's that symbol that you do. And when you see Pretty Little Poppy, you see all of that. And I hope even when I walk in there, it's something, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have, you know, when you go in there, it's welcoming. Can you agree you with know, that? It, it is very welcoming. Yeah. That's why I said, you know, she has a nice shop. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like a swap meet or something. It actually no. looked like a... So many people thought it was going to be like a swap meet. Right. I'm like, no, I have to show you this vision. But it was in my head, so I couldn't... <laughs> I had to take it out of here no. in order to show it. <laughs> and, and that's what's... You know, I mean, you, your average person would think that, right? But no, it, 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 it really is welcoming. It's like a real department store. Like, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Thank you. I put a blood, sweat, and a lot of tears into <laughs> that thing to get it filled. Pretty Little Poppy. Like, what's the, where did the name come oh, from? How, oh, my God. So the name, it's actually really funny because I was driving and um, I was talking to my husband. And I've told my husband the vision for Pretty Little Poppy for the last 10 years. Many, many 10 times. Years? 10 years? Wow, okay. Many, many, many times. And he was like, don't see it, don't see it, don't see it. How are you going to make money? So he's like, you're going to have a store and you're not going to have any items that belong to you. And I'm like, no. And then he's like, you're going to sell people stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, and you're going to take zero commission? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, how are you going to make money? I'm like, I don't know. But <laughs> but see, this goes to my point where I tell everybody, even in the beginning of your dreams, everybody is not going to understand it. But you could, it's your vision. Yes. Until it actually happens, then they'd be like, oh. Yes. But it takes time. Like you said, 10 years ten ago. 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, but you kept going. But go ahead, because I want to hear this story. Okay. So, well, that's what I told him. So I was like, and then he goes, well, if you're going to do this, the way you're describing it, you need to have a catchy name. And I'm like, I know, something like Pretty Little Poppy. And then he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he's like, did that just, like, come out of you? And I'm like, it just came out. And I'm like, that's the name. And I knew right then and there that that was the name. He's like, yeah. He goes, and you're little, and it's Poppy, <laughs> and the Antelope Valley. And I said, and you know what? I go, and we're going to spread like poppies in the Antelope Valley. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening. These these vendors, like, they always say, like, oh, is it okay if I'm in another store? Or, oh, I'm like, well, yeah. You don't see, you know, VO5 right. in one store. Right. Like, that's not how you're going to make money. you got to be in multiple stores. Yeah, you need to have... You know, why do you think there's a Walmart and a CVS and a Target and all that, you know? Right. So um, I'm just one little speck for you, you know? So, um, yeah, that it literally just came out like that. So I know, so earlier you mentioned, like, it all started because of your dad. So what's the backstory on that? So I've had this vision for 10 years. Um, I said I wasn't going to cry during this, so we're not going to cry during this. But I've had this okay vision for, for 10 years. Um, it was a very rough 10 years, very rough 10 years. So it's crazy because sometimes history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. And what was happening two years ago was history repeating itself. And 10 years ago, 
I went down. 10 years ago, I lost it. 10 years ago, I failed. 10 years ago, I gave up on life. I literally was like, I'm done. I can't do this no more. And then when, when this happened and history was re repeating itself, I said, not this time. I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to fail. I'm going to keep going, and this is just the beginning. Like, so I went from wanting to lose my life to wanting to start my life, and I go, I'm not going down this time. But it's resilience. And that's mm -hmm. how Pretty Little Poppy, like, I would see, and I would always say, like, this place is so much more, and, and, and people say, like, don't get emotionally attached in your business. Don't get, like, you can't be so emotional in your business. But Pretty Little Poppy is my emotion. Pretty little poppy is my purpose. It is my, um, it's my, it's my. It's a piece of you. It's a piece of me. You it know? Really so is. it is emotional because, of course. because it was, it was a piece of my puzzle that I needed. And so like every time I wanted to give up, I, and I did many, 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 many times. Every time I wanted to give up, I would see an additional piece of that puzzle. And, and it would be, like, down to the squares that you see, down to the just everything, God would be like, nope, here, let me give you a refresher that you're going to do this one day. Let me remind you you're going to do this one day. So it wasn't until my dad, so we're going on two years, um, he got COVID. Uh, we, the whole family was sick. There was 14 of us. We were all sick. And um, so he passed December 30th. My grandmother, January 3rd. And then a week later, um, I got a referral that I was going to be going to City of Hope. And same exact thing. Ten years prior to that, everything was happening to the T. My grandma died. I got my referral to UCLA. And, and I was just like, well, why again? Why again? You know? And I'm like, what, what is it? This time felt different, though. This time felt like... It wasn't the end. It was the beginning. Yeah. And um, I just, it was then that I just, I felt so defeated. I felt so depressed. And I looked at my kids and I'm like, I remember the, the trauma that I gave to them 10 years ago and the hurt that they saw. And I was like, I need to show them that when you go through life struggles, you can either give up, which they've seen me do, or you can build from it, and you can learn from it, and you can grow from it. And I wanted to show them that this is what giving up looks like, and this is what growing looks like. I wouldn't say giving up. I, I would, would say I you're just, struggling. I was just about to say that. No, you, did, was, you didn't give up. Struggling. You struggling. No, she took a break. Right. Like how we talked on the last show. Right. Everybody got to take, take a, break a break and step back sometimes. Right. You never gave up. Because look at you here. Yeah, I didn't give up. But like 10 years ago, oh, I was pretty close to giving up. No. I, but well, that's everyone. No, yeah. I know. No, but I was literally January 7th. I almost committed suicide. January right. 7th. So I was saved January 8th. So, like, at that point, they saw me literally at the bottom that I could possibly go. And then this time, like, to sit there and have my 17-year-old daughter saying, wow, mom, I'm so proud of you. You know, that's what we, that's what mm -hmm. I live for. You know, for my kids, for their future, for, you know, that, that's why I do this. You know, it's because my ultimate goal is to create this special thing that I can just sit there and say, here you go. You oh, know, right. and, and, and hand that over to, to my daughter. And, and same thing for my son, you know, and, um, but it was, it, it ultimately, this place has been pure healing, like, for me. I don't right. know, it's just, it's so much more than a marketplace. Right. Like, it, like for, for vendors, it's, it's, it's a place for them to sell their product, and, and I always want them to know, like, we're family, and, 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 and it is family. It's, you have the cousins you don't talk to. You have the cousins you, you know, you see, and you're like, oh, my God, hi, I miss you so much. And then you have, you know, I have a vendor, his name's Pops, and he's literally, like, I feel like he's, like, my dad, you know. He's my handyman. He comes and he helps me. It's a family, you know, and I have been on this crazy roller coaster for the last six months, but it's been beautiful, and it's been amazing, and I feel like it's, it's transforming me as a person, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's like my view on Pretty Little Poppy. But ultimately, business is business, and I'm here to help build these foundations for these, these businesses. So it's kind of like a yin and a, I don't know, it's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. No, it is. And, and again, like, 
hearing you say all of that and say I gave up and no you didn't you actually just were struggling right Mm -hmm. and you were just finding your purpose and you were rerouting and at times we have like a road map right and we can either pit we can either go downhill Right. And then keep going back into that same. So like that, that same cycle. cycle right. Mm-hmm. But can we pivot and just go up? And I think that's what you did at that time, mm-hmm. because for you to give up, you wouldn't be here present. Right. Yeah. And that's what I so, do know now. Like now that I see right. everything and where we're at now, right. being here, right. there was all it was all part of this greater plan. You but know. give yourself grace. I know, I know. We're I know always it's the hardest on ourselves. We are. And We're I, always the hardest on ourselves. And me, when we first had our conversation, yeah, I had gone and signed a paper. But we ended oh my God, up, we ended up having two hours two, later. And, and it's true because my dad struggles with, well, he's still a cancer survivor. And it's this December 28th will actually be... 16 years that he was diagnosed and I actually am a survivor myself so when you were sharing all of these things I felt that connection but what you didn't realize is that through your vulnerability you were giving me strength because before I moved back here to Palmdale I had a lot of things going on where I drove up to Big Rock Creek to clock out Mm -hmm. where I know where you're coming from but something reassured me that that's not where I, where I need to be. And I sat in my car and I cried. I cried like I had never cried before. But I needed, I needed that. Mm-hmm. And what I just sat there and I said, this isn't what I want. I know that there's a purpose through all of this. Mm-hmm. To meet people like you. To meet people like Mike. To say my truth. You know, because sometimes when they might see you like, oh, you know, everything is great with Brenda and all this. No, we also have our truth. But that truth is your result. Mm -hmm. And that is pretty low poppy, how you help people like me unintentionally. And that is your gift, Brenda. And I tell you that all the time. Give yourself grace because you're a gem. Mm -hmm. You really are. There's not a lot of people that are willing to, to do all of this platform for nothing in return, like Mike, like even myself. You know, I don't give myself grace. And I'm also reminded all the time, you do so much. Mm-hmm. Where like for even the teachers this morning, I gave them all donuts. And they were so thankful, thankful. And I said, you wake up every day, regardless of your reality, to deal with these kids. And no one ever says thank you. So donuts is the least I can do for the, in, for the what is it, the investment for our future. And it comes in different forms. Mm-hmm. Being the voice, right? And all being the vulnerability. And you setting vulnerability, voice, and a platform. That's when I say, Brenda, grace. I think that that's another thing with Pretty Little Poppy is... It was always put on my heart to be honest because if I can do it, I do believe anybody can do it. So so I want to, I want to touch on that because, and I, and I I want to thank you for being vulnerable and talking about this because one of the things that I, I love talking about on this show is suicide prevention. Um, Jacqueline Hernandez has the, um, you are enough foundation and she does a segment with me every month on the show and it's so suicide prevention. Um, cause I, I was, I've been in your place where I want to just give up and just end it and I was cool with it, but I want, I want to go back to January 7th. You said, mm-hmm. if you don't mind, what was the moment of you saying, no, I'm not going that route. Mm. And I'm, and I'm asking you this because a lot of people are in your situation that may be in your situation today, next week, next year, and they may listen to this. And I want people to know that it's, it's not too late. It's not, you, you're here for a purpose, mm-hmm. so right? I, yeah, it was, it was actually a knock on my door. Somebody came. It was, um, so I had some friends, and um, it was one of my friend's mother, mm-hmm. And she knocked on the door, and she's like, I just want to pretty much remind you that there's still, like, there's a purpose for you. There's there's a future for you. And to be remi- reminded that that it's not done yet, you know, 
you still have so much more to accomplish. And um, that was literally what it was. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? You know, at first I thought it was, it was me saying my farewell and my goodbye. But I think at that moment, it was me saying farewell, goodbye to the old Brenda. Yeah. And because it was a moment of saved. And I just remember I threw my hands up and I didn't have words. I didn't know what to do, but I just said, okay, God, if you are real and if, and if I am more than this, and if I have a purpose and if I'm, then you come in and do whatever you need to do to me because I'm tired yeah. and I'm giving up. You it's know, the pain, it's the right? Pain. It's You're the pain. You're just exhausted. You're exhausted. Yeah. Right. And um, and then I just felt this amazing sensation come over my body, and 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 I was just like, "What's happening?" And I questioned it, and it was just something just happened inside of my heart that just reminded me there is so much more out there for you. You keep going, you know? And I, and I just, I held on to that little tiny, tiny glimmer of hope. And then the next day I woke up and I was like, did I feel what I felt last night? And I did. And I woke up and I said, okay, today's day one. Let's just keep going. And let's just keep going. And then it was just a constant daily reminder that you are worthy, Brenda. There is more for you, Brenda. You need, you have to be here for these kids. You know, I had a, you know, my babies were seven and five at the time, mm. you know, so it was like, go be a mom, go, you know, if that's all you're here to do, go be a mom, you know, go be, go be there for yourself. And it was just an everyday process of just healing and restoring and reminding myself of my worth. And you know, we're here now, 10 years later, so. Wow. That's just amazing. Okay. That's why I told you, ooh, wait until Brenda comes on. <laughs> well, I, I like speeches like right now, but um, so I am speeches right now because um, it's amazing what you're doing. Um, yeah. I appreciate what you're doing. Um, your story is incredible. You, you, you don't realize the people you're touching, the people you're going to touch and continue to touch. Even by doing like this show, right, just telling your story. I mean, you, you, you don't realize it. I don't even think you realize it. Yeah. The vulnerability, we think yeah. it's weakness, but in reality, it's strength. It really is. That's what I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I really am hopeful to show people, like, and sometimes it takes a village, you yeah. know, and it's it okay does. to not be okay, and it's okay to sit there and ask for help, and it's okay to sit there and say, like, we come in, we have vendors come in, and they're like, I just don't like my display and I'm like let's let's work on it let's fix it let's you know let's yeah. and, and I think ultimately it does something internally mm -hmm. you know because you sit there and you see this thing and you're just so proud and it's like now I can sit there like for them it's a box for me it's a bigger box mm -hmm. you know but ultimately it's my box you know and I, I get to change it and I get to you know ch as I change it changes you mm -hmm. know and and, and you see, and then finally you just sit back and you're like, dang, I did this. When you first, uh, so how, how long has it been open now? Six months. Six months. <laughs> so Six months. did you always start off right here or was it something else before like pop-ups first? Or? I've never done pop-ups. That's okay. the crazy thing. I've never done pop-ups and I don't create anything <laughs> at all. So one day you just opened up a store. My husband is my neighbor. Yeah. I always say the Lord knows we needed to be separated by a hallway. <laughs> so... <laughs> My husband's my neighbor, and when he, he signed the lease, and then um, there was supposed to be somebody in that spot, and they ended up falling out for whatever reason. And um, so there was just this empty spot, you know, okay. available, and um, I just, I took my husband, and I said, hey, come here, I just want to show you something. And then I go, I know I've told you this vision, God knows how many times, and you don't see it, but just come really quick. And we went to the middle, and I said, just close your eyes. And then I just described it. And I was like, imagine this, and then we're going to promote people's services, and then we're going to have, you're going to have a box, and you're going to sit there and just make it a shop. And Because not everybody could afford $1,500 a month. Right. right. You know, so it's like, but you still, like, so if you can take care of this, and eventually it's going to grow, and it's going to grow, and right. it's going to grow, and get you ready for the next step, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I explained it all to him. And for the first time, I heard my husband say, I see it. And I, the next day, I called uh, Lancaster Promenade. You know, Corey, I submitted. 
my my paperwork to him and I signed um, my lease on January 12th, which is my dad's birthday. Nice. Yep. And it just, I had two months to figure it out, do blueprints, get now, a salary. Now, so in it. that two months, because we, we all know as business owners, like mm-hmm. there wasn't an easy two months. What type of adversities <laughs> did you actually go through? Well, one, because I didn't do pop-ups, I didn't know people. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew me. Nobody knows who I am. And um, I just remember sitting there, sitting in this empty thing with um, nothing. It was literally four walls. And I'm like, okay, how am I going to fill these 90 spots? How am I going to How am I gonna build this? How am I going to, like, what now? And every day I would just do one task. And I, I did a video and on Instagram. It's my first video. Yeah, I remember that. People swore I was tall when they, <laughs> <laughs> they, they would come Tell in. Tell the story about that video, though. Um, that, that what? That you didn't want to do anything. Oh. You've never. Oh, this is like so hard for me. I am the shyest. And you're doing amazing right now, by the way. Thank you. Cause <laughs> let me tell you, I felt like it was the first day of school today. I was like, no. So I did, I, I, I just sat there in an empty room and I, you know, put this, I got this thing. I didn't even have like a, um. What is it to hold your cell phone? Yeah, I think you were in the car. A right? selfie, yeah. what, the selfie stick. I didn't even have like anything. Like oh, yeah. I didn't, and then I was just like, you know what? Let me just throw myself out there and let me just see who who can use it. And um, within, I want to say a week, uh, my responses were crazy. Within two weeks, we had ninety spots filled. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I'm guilty to one of them. And I would sit there at a rectangle table. Mm-hmm. with the chair with, <laughs> with one chair, chair rectangle <laughs> table and I would I listen to everybody's story everybody's story on why they started and how they started and I was I was reminded that there is so much more for everybody you yeah. know and we can come together as a community as a village and help each other out to make our dreams come true your dream is to be in a store my dream is to have a store you know, so if we come together, we both win. Right. You know, yeah. so that was exciting. And, um, you know, I've learned, I've made so many mistakes, so many mistakes. And that's but how are you supposed I'm, to grow without them? Exactly. And that's what I've seen. I have been stretched and crushed and pulled and, and everything, but I feel like I am stronger than I've been in my 37 years of life. Because now yeah. I'm, All the heartache that I've had to go through, that's the one thing. We can sit there and we can be like, oh, I'm going to change. Oh, I'm going to better myself. But when you truly have eyes to see and eyes to see your wrongdoing, your mistakes, and actually take them and flip them and learn from them and grow from them and then share that with other people so that hopefully they don't make the same mistake that's what I'm here for. Well, it's holding accountability, right? Yeah. And I think this whole time you were holding all the accountability mm-hmm. from your hiccups, we'll say, right? Mm-hmm. And up until now. So it's something that we all struggle with, mm-hmm. with accountability. Saying, yeah, I, I did that. Oh, I didn't do that. Or I lack in that. You know, and I go back to that day that we met. I walked into that building and I didn't know what I was doing there. But I just knew I needed to be there. <laughs> I walked into that door, like through those doors, broken. And you unintentionally picked me up. Because I went there with people saying, oh, yeah, what you do, it's, it's great, your balloons. It was a hobby. But people believed in me. But it's because I can actually pick something up and make something out of it. Maybe balloons isn't my, you know, like my, my future, but it was a platform to that from that moment, just so you know, I am here today because of you. And you don't know that, but that's why I hold a very special place for you, Brenda. Thank you. Like you have no idea. And that's why I'm here today. If I would have never walked in through those doors, I would have gave up because I knew it was easier to do that. And a lot of people do. But holding accountability, that's the hardest thing. And asking for help. I walked in there asking you for help. I've never asked for help. And it was challenging. But through your strength, and like you say, you're so small and mighty. That was what clicked to me. Like, gosh, you're so little and so spunky and just, you know, and you're giving me your truth. 
you don't even know me. But everything aligned. Even our moms have the same name. (laughs) (laughs) And that's why I needed the first thing I left from our our first podcast. Where did I run to? (laughs) I ran to her. (laughs) But you know why? Because you might have not known that. Mm. Or she might have not even known that. But that is the truth. You are a factor in my life. And you are a factor in, in so many people's lives, Brenda. Like what you do is phenomenal. And we need more people like you. And that's why you deserve to be recognized and to be thankful. Like people really need to know what you're doing, you know, and they need to hear your truth to be able to relate, you know, and say, wow, I also did have hiccups, right? But this is what you can do if what what happens next matters, right? Kept right. saying that. I tell my kids that. Although you did this, but what you do next is what matters. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, that just goes into something else I was going to ask you because you had a dream of having a store. Now you have your store, right? Mm-hmm. And did that, did, at one point, that dream scare you? Oh, every day. Okay. So now, <laughs> but look, now you have your store. What's your next big dream? Oh, this is just getting started. Um, I believe it. It's just getting started. <laughs> um, so we're in the process of expanding a little bit. Um, we're, so I have the workshops for, mm. for, and that's the cool thing. So out of all the vendors, so 90 vendors, originally we started. So we've housed over about 170 vendors in there. Oh, well, um, that's a lot. No, there's a lot. That's a lot. It's amazing. I it's didn't, beautiful. I didn't know you had that many in there. Yeah. Because so right it doesn't now we, look like that. I mean, it, your store is full. But it doesn't look like that many vendors. That's incredible. Right now we have 92. 92 in there. So we probably lose about five a month, and then we replenish those ones. Okay. So that's kind of, it's like a it's like a bittersweet moment because I get sad when they leave, but then it's a new opportunity yeah. for mm-hmm. new Absolutely. vendors yeah. to come in. So that's my emotion part. You're going to see my emotions are very tied into this place. But it's beautiful. But it's sincere. It's sincere. Yeah. Like you said, it's like a family. It is a family. And, and you know what? Um, I did. I did a when I had Andreas on the show uh, one time. You know, I, I learned some. I learned something from everybody all the time. And, and Andreas is an incredible person to learn from. Uh, but he he spoke on how sometimes we want success or we want this business right, but we may not be ready for it yet. So even the people that leave, maybe they. They gave it a chance, right? right? Maybe they're not ready yet. Maybe they got to go back and do something else. And hopefully they took they took a takeaway from that. Mm-hmm. And they're going to make it better and come back at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I'm it's... I'm always there. Yeah. Right, no. So, I mean, you, you never know, you know, everything happens for a reason. I mean, I know we always say that, but sometimes people are just, just not ready that moment. Even though right. we want it so bad, but sometimes we're just not ready. And that's why things take time the way they do. It's like your secret. vision was 10 years ago, mm-hmm. but look how long it took you. Because you wasn't, you wasn't ready 10 years ago. Mm-mm. You had to go through all this adversity and all the emotions and all the stuff that you went through. And now look at you. And that's, that's like, so that's my ultimate goal. 2023, I, I am very hopeful for that year. Um, we want to expand the workshop for the kids. We ha- so with our nonprofit, we really want to get that on the, on, mm. out there and let people know that, um, you know, if anybody wants to volunteer, if anybody wants to mentor these kids, we try to link them up the best way we can. So say, for example... If I have a, a, a kid that wants to do podcasts, I would look for somebody who does that so that you can just spend a day with them. Um, and then I think that's where we can kind of like squeeze in because I think there is, that's what's going to happen next is it's taking it to that next level. So we want to expand the nonprofit. We want to um, start a day. So it's called a day in my shoes. Mm-hmm. And what it is, is it's a recording of the behind the scenes of what you do and why you do what you do. And I think that um, with creating items, um, we tend to put a price point on it, and then customers will sit there and say, like, oh, I can get this from TJ Maxx for cheaper, you know? But it's you don't know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. And so when we actually give the vendors an opportunity to be able to really show their craft and show what they do and explain the work behind it, 
then you see the value in the products that they're making. Everything that you go in there and you see from the store, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's so detailed. It's so, and you get to learn that not only are you buying an item that you're going to use and love, you're supporting a dream. You know, I get to sit there and listen to these vendors talk about their goals and what's going to happen next. And we sit there and we encourage, you know, just from, uh, we have a, a vendor, her name's Charlene, Unhooked by Blinky, And she just wanted, like, she was so excited to just add tags to her items that she makes or proper packaging or, like, just adding, you know, the smallest details, you know. So it's just, it's exciting because you see your business take that next step, Mm -hmm. you know, and and that's what we get to do. And that's what I want to showcase for them. I want to showcase who they are as a person, why they got started, how they create things, and ultimately how it goes into production and how it goes into the hands and then I want to also share the customers their response how do they receive these items you Mm -hmm. know because they sit there and say you know oh my god this thing I look at it and inspires me daily because I want to pursue that one day or I want to do that so it it is for me it's a spider web I feel like we're all connected in one way or another no we are vibrationally we are connected in one way yeah and that's what I feel like this place allows for us to actually see our connections and it, and it allows for us to connect. And, and that's what's exciting about this place. So, yeah, I've said it many, many times. Pretty Little Poppy is so much more than a marketplace. So well, you're like the plug. It, I mean, you, <laughs> you said something interesting because um, I've talked to Diana about this. Uh, where, you know, and, and right before the show, I was kind of telling you what I did being in entertainment for 35 years. But I'm kind of semi-retired now. And everything that I do now has to have a purpose. And that's why I want to... Another reason why I started this podcast is because it has a purpose, because it's telling people stories like your story. But it's also, I, I want to mentor, and, I, and I've been mentoring youth for about, I want to say, two and a half, three years now. But I want to do more mentorships, like even like with the podcast, like I was just telling Diana the other day that, you know, I want to bring kids in here and get them in front of a microphone, get them in front of a camera. Because again, back to what I was saying earlier, once you expose them to something, now they have a vision, now they have a hunger for something that they actually want to do as opposed to just hanging out in the streets. Yeah. And they need that. They really, really do need some, some guidance, especially, Mm -hmm. or hope. I won't even say guidance because they know where they're going. Right. They just need that opportunity. Yeah. Right. That, that, or just even believing in them, Mm -hmm. you know, to, to allow them to grow and believe in in themselves. But who's going to say, Hey, I have a studio. You want to come in? How many people are willing to do that? They're not. They're not. That's not, the hard. Honestly, yeah. Exactly. But the fact that you guys do, that's already leading. But you're leading by example. Because now how many people are going to take that away and be like, oh, man, I really do also have this, that I can do that. Mm. And the kids, that is our future. And then, too, I think also um, there's times where people want to help and they just don't know how. How. Exactly. How they can help. So by us sitting there saying, hey, these are the different ways that we need help. And if and if just one falls onto someone's lap, that's a blessing for us and it's a blessing for you because now you get to do what you want to do in, in the way that you want to help and we get the help, you know. So I do I do see a lot of kids come in and they're like, Well, I want to do this. Well, I don't I can't help you in that area, but I'll find somebody who can. Right. Yeah. And and that's what's exciting for them. And it's not even just kids. Um, you know, there's so many talented people out there in this world that need to just find what they can do with the gift that they have. Mm -hmm. And that's like with, with Jerry, um, because Jerry has this amazing gift. And when I met him, I was like, you are going to, you are destined to do something special. And we would just sit there and brainstorm together. And I'm like, just, tag along with me on one thing and let's see what we can do with this. And, um, and that's what he did. And he made something amazing and, and it was fun. And we were like, what next? And we have an interview coming up tomorrow and it's like, we're learning, we're growing everything. And it's, it's just, I get to see people like him take that. Next right. Well, let's introduce Jerry. Yeah, let's introduce Jerry. All right. So, 
What's your big plans now? You so for 2023, we started, we already did one. We're actually currently doing one right now. We have one scheduled for tomorrow. We really want to have a day in your shoes. We want to learn about the maker, mm -hmm. learn about what they do, learn about, um, share with the community their talents and their future and their goals. And um, how this came about was I love to talk to the vendors. And his wife is um, actually a vendor at the store. And, um, and that's another thing I love. If you see these kids, when the kids come shopping with the parents, the kids don't want to leave. And that's not very often that <laughs> a parent can work, do their job, right. and know that their children are safe, they're enjoying <laughs> themselves, and they actually don't want to leave. Sometimes it's, it's hard to get them out, and they're actually crying when they leave. But that, to me, is a blessing because these kids like to be at this store. Right. And, and they say, like, I can't tell you how many times customers have came in and said, when I walk through these doors, I sense this calm peace. It's it's a home. Mm -hmm. It's and that's what I always wanted. So Pretty Little Poppy is my safe haven. It's my safe place, and to be able to share my safe place with people and to welcome them in at any age, from babies to mm -hmm. to I have a, a father who comes to visit. He's ninety two years old, and he just sits there and he stares at his daughter's um, display for hours and just says, "I'm so proud of my daughter." You know, and that's a 92-year-old. Oh, my nice. God. And it's just amazing. And he just talks to me, and he tells me, he's like, I'm 92, and I've never seen something like this before. Yeah, and I can honestly say that, too. When I go in there, I feel like I am at home. I mean, you have a fireplace. There's a couch. <laughs> there's a table. You it's want coffee. Couch. <laughs> right. You have the snacks. <laughs> I, I mean, there. why would you want to leave? You? <laughs> my, exactly. My, my son loves that place. It's, like, so hard to get him out of there mm -hmm. as soon as he walks in he walks up straight to brendan gives her a hug mm -hmm. nice goes straight nice. to the place and, and he knows exactly where to go yep. mm -hmm. and and then they'll go buy mythical candy and grab a grab, mm -hmm. a, grab a candy everybody knows the routine here already but that's why so as we were talking so they're there often his baby likes to be there and um i think i had asked you what do you do like because mm. everybody does something and he's like oh i'm a photographer and i'm like wow i can use a photographer you know, I go, but I was honest with him, and I said, unfortunately, you know, we, we don't make a lot of money here, you know, and, um, you know, it is, can we work on, like, a barter-type deal here? And he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a shoot for you, and um, we did it, and it was amazing. It was so nice. amazing, and I was just like, man, you're talented. Like, let's, let's get you out there, and, um, and I don't think you, like, I think that sometimes just, like, with me, um, I don't see my worth. I don't think you saw your worth. Right. And I think that when we remind each other how worthy we are. Grace. And Grace, <laughs> it's exciting because now now do you see your worth? Now you see how special you are? Um, I mean, <laughs> still kind of uh, looking. But, I mean, I do appreciate the platform you've given me. And, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's exciting. So that's what we're going to do. So we're, we're going to be working on um, recording uh, yeah, so we're planning on recording a document, a documentary uh, style, just like interviews behind the scenes, mm. get a little um, feel of how they create this product that, you know, they're so... Right, their labor of love. Passionate, yeah. passionate for. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, but you're capturing, you're almost like a historian. <laughs> You're capturing, mm. you know, moments that other people might not see, right? right. Or be like, you, it's through an experience. Whenever you go somewhere, what do you go for? You go for the experience. You want to know what it feels like. You want to know what it smells like, right? You want to be able to save for all of that. So in reality, what you're doing, like when I heard that you're a photographer, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I think that's phenomenal because you have an eye to capturing that the moment a historian god forbid i mean one of us is not here tomorrow you captured this moment mm -hmm. so that is key you know and not only that but for kids to give that you're young you know so you're relatable to our youth where you can say like oh man i can relate to him i want to do what he's doing what what took you you know how did you get to where you are today so that's a lot to say so i was like my husband says, stop and smell the roses. <laughs> Savor the moment. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is awesome. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, Brenda just approached me, and, you know, like she said, I didn't see, you know, what I could really bring to the table, but 
I saw her vision and how passionate she was, and I was just like, you know, I'm all in, whatever you want. Um, I'm here to support you. You know, you're, you're helping me out, you're giving me a platform. It's and that, and that, I'm sorry to mean to interrupt you. Um, that, that's just great when you have people around you in your circle that is all about the vision and just supporting people. It's not even about the money. Because I tell people all the time, don't chase money. Money Chase your come. passion, your vision. The money will always present itself. One of my mentors taught me that at a young age. Money will always present itself. When you chase money, then it's like I was talking about earlier about chasing destinations, right? It's about the journey. So when you're chasing your passion, you're on a journey, right? But when people chase money, it's like, okay, well, you want a million dollars. You want $5 million. Now you're at your destination. Now what? Like, it's not fulfilling. Well, when you chase your your passion and you you enjoy that journey, it's more fulfilling yeah. for me. That's just my personal opinion. No, oh. I agree. And I think the first video that we did, it was because, so we are on Lancaster Boulevard, but we're technically on FIG. The reason our address is like that is because we're the old B of A. So our face is on the boulevard. So we're really hard to find. And we've had a couple people challenge. Ch- mm-hmm. It's been very challenging. So he actually did a drone. And it's pretty much directions to get to Pretty Little Poppy. Nice. So, like, just little things like that. And wow. now people can actually see where we're at and our location. And and it's cool because as I um, as I talk to him and we do, like, the first skit, it's like, you know what? Like, And the one thing he doesn't do and I tell him he has to do is he <laughs> has to mark his stuff. You know, because I feel like that also... Like, we got to be proud of what we create, you know? So I'm like, well, put your logo on the back. Oh, put yeah. your, you know, being, branding is, branding is very is, important. It's so crucial. If you know, I don't know if you ever seen my Instagram page, but I never put up a video unless my, that logo is on the bottom. Right, yes. It's, even if it's just like a clear logo at the bottom where it's not sticking out so much, but branding is so important. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's why I feel like, too, with, with um, getting an opportunity like that, it's taking his business just one step every right. time it's like okay now we got to do what were we saying we got to do like credits at the end mm-hmm. you know like let's make it look yeah let's make us look professional a little documentary <laughs> style yeah oh, that's dope though i love that exactly i love that because you can even take that and I, I don't know i can't remember do you have tv screens in your place yeah i have one, one. Right, so you play that documentary throughout the whole day let <laughs> when you let your visitors come in and, and see that i mean that's dope see this is what we do so imagine you have 90 vendors and you're able to do these talks. How can we take your business to the next level? My exactly. business is to the next level. Yeah. I would have never thought of doing that. And now I'm, we look at that's yeah. genius. Well, that's, that's smart. I, I, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but it is. No, it, but I, I, I mean, I brought that up because I'm actually doing that with the chamber. Um, like, So we're remodeling the whole Hispanic chamber's office and we're doing that. Um, I'm actually in the middle of putting together a video like that because we're we just giving our customers or our members just that extra right. right because they pay to be members and we got to give them some extra so we're putting the putting together videos right now so when you walk into the chamber office or if you see us at a pop-up or you see it at our luncheon that video is always going to be playing like a 30 second clip or a right. minute clip of you talking about your business and people just see it yeah, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> I, I mean, but you guys is already. It's like, adver- yeah, it, it is in a way also advertisement. Yeah. But not only that, you're giving them an experience, yeah. not just advertisement. And everything's about an experience, right? You go somewhere, or you buy something for what? The way it feels, the way it looks. The, it's the same thing with this. I would want, and when people well, say, I, I no. can go, when they would say, I would rather go to TJ Maxx. And I, yeah, but do you know that vendor? Does that vendor live in your community? Mm-hmm. Are you giving back to your community in that way? That vendor probably wouldn't care if you buy it or not at DJ Maxx because someone else will. But, but the fact that you know where it's coming from. You, you know where that goes from? I, I did a show with my friend Jeanette. Um, shout out to Jeanette because she, she got me saying this phrase all the time now. People buy from people. Mm-hmm. People don't buy from companies. They right. buy from people. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like whoever is the face of your company, when you walk into that store, whether it's a burger joint or a clothing store, they buy from people. If you have a bad experience with that person at their front desk, mm-hmm. guess what you're going to do? Go down the street to another clothing store mm-hmm. or burger place, right? Because people buy from people. Yeah, it's so it's true. true. So that's what, another reason why when I started this podcast, I wanted to interview business owners because people want to know you because they buy from you mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah i think that that's what we really want to do is for 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 them to know who they're getting this exactly. stuff from yeah. and and everybody has a story 
Everybody right. has a story. Like, what made you start photography? Um, so, back in the days, like in 2015, I would say. So, my friend was doing, like, YouTube, and he had, um, he was like, I need, like, a cameraman. Uh, would you be willing to help me out? And as soon as I touched it, I, I knew I was like, like, I, I like this thing. So, know, you was like, exposed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got brought in, and I just fell in love with it, and mm-hmm. I haven't stopped. I'm just been upgrading my equipment um, little by little and just, you know, chasing the next steps, you know. Right. You got your, your fire got ignited. Yeah. Exactly. You know? I mean, and especially after meeting you, I mean, just networking and networking with other people and all that, you know. I mean, that's so. where it starts, man. It always starts with just networking with people and doing right. small projects and then scaling it, scaling it from there. Mm-hmm. It's someone believing in you as well, right? Yeah. Right. Because he felt that you, although you might have not had the knowledge, he believed in you, right? And he knew that there was something there. And then it just needed, you just kind of needed to reassure that. Right. And look at where we are today. My God. No, it's exciting. I'm excited for him. I'm excited. I mean, I am excited for you. I think that this is going to be right. a great opportunity for you to be able to um, pursue and, and truly, truly pursue it as a career. You know, so it's exciting. I that's where I feel blessed because I get first row to vendors like this. Wow! I I saw him come in. He was coming in to support his partner. That's how he showed up. Um, and and by the time you know, a conversation took place, and and it was literally like, well, what what do you do? And 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 to see him now actually be able to show the community, this is what I do. This is what I love to do, and I'm great at it. Yeah. That to me is amazing. Yeah. You know, it it just actually dawned on me right now how many lanes you're providing. Like the Pretty Little Poppy marketplaces, that's just not a store where vendors go and put their stuff but you're providing so much more than that so many different it's so many different levels to that and i'm just like sitting here like just going in my mind like wow the opportunities you're giving people the the yeah. lessons the people are learning for even with the people that come there and then they leave because again back to what i was saying earlier you got to have a takeaway from that like maybe right. you wasn't ready but guess what you started somewhere at least you started something and now you know where you at now you know what you need to work on Right. right. It's just it's so many levels to it at this point, like teaching the kids your, your um, foundations like, wow, it's a lot. It's huge. <laughs> it's you know, huge. And when you say, oh, I don't do anything. You know what you're what you what business you're in? You're in the business of people building. Yeah. You might not have that craft. You might not do that. You know, ha- you're in the business of people building. But you know what? I, yeah. I mean, I love the fact that she's so humble. Maybe because oh, yeah. I am too. Because I, I mean, it's just because we we do it because we love and care for people, and we just want to help people and give people this space and platforms. I'm gonna get a plaque with the word grace every time. I'm just hold it up. <laughs> I mean, grace. I mean, but you, but you know what though? It, it's okay for to me. Save her. No, I know, but for me, I guess it's because the way I was raised and yeah. the way I grew up, it's like. That's all I want to do is help people. Like it's not about me. Like nothing's about one person, and and I never want to feel that way. I don't want to feel like it's just me. Like it's not. But going back to your character strengths, spirituality is my number one. Yeah, and that's why I say, because I'm and spirituality is my number one character strength. Good, and I'm very spiritual. And, and but I don't want people to get confused. I'm actually going to do a show about this because I was just reading a book about this. Um, God is my foundation. Right. But I am very spiritual right. because we all are connected spiritually and vibrationally. If you ever listen to the law, like a lot of people uh, reference the law of attraction, right? Mm-hmm. But there is 12 universal laws in this world that if, if you follow, like you understand this world. And Abraham talk, Abraham Hicks talks about that a lot, how we're all connected vibrationally because right. everything is energy. It, it really is. And you always hear me talking yeah. on Instagram, posting about energy. And, you yeah. know, and I study Buddhism. You know, I was raised Catholic. So I know about a lot of this stuff. You know, right. like I said, God is my foundation. He's my number one foundation. My foundation is strong. But at the same time, I do. I mean, he created the stars and the moon. So when people right. are in astrology and all that, where do you think it came from? Right. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of people get confused when you say you're spiritual. You know, you're very spiritual, so you don't believe in God. It's like, no, no, it you has think, nothing to do with it. You think, man, right. yeah, it has nothing to do with that. No. It's like a spiritual religion. Like, no, I'm I'm a very spiritual person, very right. spiritual. But that's how I feel, and that's why I do what I do too. Is because I've been given a second chance. Mm-hmm. I've been given a second opportunity, and I don't feel like it was necessarily for me. It was for me to help others. For me, but in that, it's coming to me. But in that, it's also helping so. Others. So, do you think you was given a second chance, or do you think it, it was just an opportunity? Because I actually did this post today. I saw my post, right? <laughs> so, like, and I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase it. it. So, <laughs> when 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 God when you ask God for patience, what do He give you? Does He give you patience, or do He give you an opportunity to be patient? Mm-hmm. So that's what's crazy is, <laughs> and we can ha- we're probably gonna have to extend this discussion <laughs> because um, I have it when I pray, and and I and I don't realize what he's doing until he's done that I'm like, oh, that was how you answered that prayer, right? That was right. how you gave me patience. That is how you gave me understanding. It was through this trial, through this obstacle, or through this experience that I needed to go through in order yeah. for me to truly understand. Because I could sit there and say, pray for patience, and then just wait. Yeah. And say, oh, I'm getting patience. Right. No. Mm-hmm. I was, and, and even like with my, with, my, with my husband, my husband has had a business for 20 years. 20 years he's had his business. And, and these last six months, I'm like, babe, I've been so stressed, and I get anxiety, and it's 3 in the morning, and I'm this, that. And he goes... Welcome to my world for the last 20 years. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm like, and, and everything he's gone through, he's like, babe, maybe you should do this. And I'm like, no, I think I'm going to do it this way. And then he's like, but I need to go through it to understand, understand it. Because yeah. he can sit there and give me all the guidance and all the help, all I need. But I'm like, I have to actually experience you, you it. You do. So he, that's how I feel like God works with me is by making me go through all of these things. And as long as I have eyes to see and really, really see, then I'm like, at the end, I'm like, oh, that's how and, I got that's that. Why, <laughs> that's how I got that that's gift. That's why earlier <laughs> Diana was talking about failure. Like, you can't get to success without going through failure. Right. And I hate that word. It's, it, I, I would rather use the word challenges because it's not failure. Because right. you don't fail. Only way you fail is if you stop right. and you completely give up. Right. That's what failure is. But if, if you're continually going, and it's okay to take a break. Like we talked about this earlier. We talked about this on the last show. Yeah. It's okay to sometimes take a break, even if it's a, a, a day or a week, whatever. It's okay to reset. You, you can reset as many times as needed. I tell right. people that all the time. It's okay. Well, even uh, there was a, I think it's Jim Carrey that was talking about depression, right? Uh-huh. I saw that. Right? Mm-hmm. And what it really is is a deep rest. Yes. Sometimes... It's okay to not be okay, yep. right? And it's that's something that we need to know how to accept. Mm-hmm. We're not always going to be, you know, at the top of our game because we're human. You know, uh, no, I read a lot. So you guys, go, every time I say I read something or I watch something, I watch so many videos because it's like what we were talking about last week about consuming. I'm constantly reading watching positive videos or positive messages like Jim Carrey. But it is really is about acceptance. A lot Mm -hmm. of people don't like acceptance because they think, well, I'm settling, right? Right. But it's not. It's one of the phrases that I love to say is you got to accept life for what it is, not what you want it to be. As humans, we try to paint this beautiful picture. We want the world to be what we want people to be. Right. And it's like, no, that's not it. We have to accept the challenges and everything that we go through on a daily basis. Right. And once you accept that, then things start to change. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Like for you, just in this conversation and what we're seeing, I know you're a little quiet over there in the corner, <laughs> but for you, absorb this. Absorb this and take this in because this is opportunity for you. Right. This is this is this right here is fueling you. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you may see like Oh, I, I, you know, Brenda and, and, and I have the store and you see, you know, Mike and he has a pot. Like you were like, this is amazing. I've never been in here. This is just your beginning, you know, and there's still so much. And now you have people that can connect with you and say, yeah. you have a question, come ask. You have a, you know, and I feel like that's how you're going to evolve. Because I'm telling you, Jerry, quote me. 
this is your beginning and this is going to be something that you are just destined to do and you are going to help people yeah. because you're going to capture the vision that they see but you're going to be able to expose it and put it at a greater scale than than we can do from our eyes you know so it's a great opportunity for you so I, I'm happy and I knew like I, I felt like you needed to be here today so that you can really just soak this in and say, OK, I see a vision and I see what's going to take place next. And I'm ready to yeah. to get on that ride. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, too. Um, hey, no, seriously. Go. No, talk. Go ahead. Because you don't talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm like, it's so crazy because, you know, like before um, before I started this journey, you know, I had tried doing this before and. I just didn't have the proper networking or people to uh, connect with, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like you say, like we were meant to cross paths and I would just pray and law of attraction. You know, I didn't really believe into that, um, but I was like super negative all the time. I just changed my uh, way of thinking. And as soon as I did that, I just new opportunities started coming in. And I was just like, you know, just please uh, show me if this is the right path that I'm supposed to be on. And, yeah. you know, I believe, I believe, that, that, I believe that's great that you recognize that it is what you're thinking, because it is all mindset. Right. It a lot is. of people don't realize it, it is mindset. And a lot of people, once you change your way of thinking and you change your mindset, then like I said, law of attraction, it, it comes. And I know it's hard. Well, how old are you? I'm 28. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a baby <laughs> but i mean a lot of people your age don't get it and i'm gonna be honest with you and and i've i was taught this uh, from one another one of my mentors men don't mature and really get life until like 30 35 yeah. wow. so for you to even no that's the truth that ask yeah. ask any older guy out there that's my i'm 51 ask them and they all tell you you know like you know what i already didn't get my shit together until i was like 35 38 something like that mm -hmm. i was 38 i'll be honest with you even though I started off at 18, I've been on my own since I was 14, I didn't really get my shit together until I was like 38, somewhere around here. Because I was still thinking I knew it all. I was still learning a lot of shit. Like, so for you to understand mindset at that age, I didn't even understand mindset at that age. It, it's actually great. And I, can, I applaud you for that. Salute you. you for that. Because mindset is the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I thought, mem like when I hear all this and I see you, I was like, mentorship mentor to these kids because again i'll go back to relatable how can they relate to you mm -hmm. you know like we were at i think it was here at the fair my son ran into a friend and then they were there with someone that they knew and the guy was a photographer a world photographer and he travels the world and he takes pictures and Ethan was like oh god i, I wish i can do that you know, like, oh, I would like that. But it was the fact that someone that's relatable, because he showed me the gentleman after. And in my mind, I was like, ah, he's young. Like, what does he know? What do you mean, what does he know? He knows what's relevant today, what I didn't know, mm -hmm. right? And the fact that he was already willing to share that with, with the kid, with the youth, mm -hmm. because they are the future. Mm -hmm. Right, they are. You know, they really, really are. So what you have, it, it's, it's, it speaks a lot. Because, like you said, you didn't always have it. You've already had a few hiccups, right? If you've already learned from that and you've already grown, but you didn't give up, mm -hmm. you kept going, and you were still willing to take the the opportunity that arised, right? And so many other people, and not necessarily, and I, and I mean, I'm so passionate about the youth, you know, like I'm so big. I always go back to that, but only because they are our, our leaders. Our future. They are our future. They are. And even I had the conversation I had with you yesterday, and I'm going to talk about this. So <laughs> because, no, we was at the city council hall meeting and I'm not going to like put nobody on blast or say like names or not. But we was at the meeting and it was this kid. He had to be 15 years old who got up in front of the council, city council and mayor and everybody was there. And, and he wanted to speak on the election. And I thought that was so great. Like, I was inspired by him. And he, but he was so nervous. Like, right, he kept apologizing. He, really, yeah. he kept saying, I'm sorry, sorry. He kept stopping, and he couldn't get his words out correctly. And that's okay, because he had the courage to at least be there and yeah. stand up in front of them, right? And one of the things that, um, how can I put this? Because I want to be nice about it. And I'm well, trying to be I, nice. I think that it was a lack of um, empathy. We yeah. can say that. Like, uh, there was a l maybe a, a little bit of that. No. Where. Well, let me, I want to say this because I, I don't. I, 
one thing I don't do is sugarcoat nothing. Right. And I'm always going to keep it real. But the mayor made a joke about something, right? And even though I didn't like, I didn't, I mean, the joke was okay, funny, but it wasn't something that I probably would have done to the youth because I didn't, I never want to minimize a youth voice because they are our future, right? And the one thing that I wish the mayor, and the mayor's a good guy, I've met him before, so I'm definitely not trying to like trash talk him or anything right now. Right. The one thing that I would have liked for all of us to do, because I think we all do this at some point, is we don't give our youth enough credit. We don't uplift them. Like, I would have actually told the youth, like, hey, you know what? The election is over. Because like, that, that was the joke. Like, he said, you do know the election was over, right? Because he wanted to talk about the election. And it's like, okay, yeah, the election is over, but... How about let's uplift him and give him some type of props for even wanting to talk about it. Right. Let's not minimize our, our youth voice because it, once we minimize them, that's why a lot of youth don't want to talk or speak up because we do things like that. Mm-hmm. So let's like yeah. uplift them and give them courage. Mm-hmm. And like how you said, the safety, you know. Right. Building the psychological safety, because like I did point out, uh, although he did feel insecure, there, I didn't also see like a support group that right. was really like, you know, um, behind. There was a few, you know, like I think his own peers. But then again, I told him there should have been a mentor guiding him. Yeah. Although every step of the way, especially if they're going to do something like this, they really don't know what's going to be on the reverse. Right. Mm-hmm. Could have been just and it was a very it could have it's an innocent comment. Yeah. However, it still lacked with empathy because it is a youth. They're still developing. Right. right. To be courageous enough for the next time to say, hey, although I didn't do it right, but I still felt good about it and then come back for it, right. you know, and, and that's, and it's funny that you do touch on that highlight because, um, I didn't notice that there was other youths in the, in the audience. And there was an email that was sent back, um, wanting to be a part of the AV wellbeing coalition because they see the good that we are doing. Right. And that's why I, I hit the youth so much because I do see how bad they do need it. Right. And that's what attracted me to, to you. Like you have this going on for the kids like forget what i'm doing what are you doing with that well i look at it as an opportunity Um, i don't know if you know my son but um so my son my my husband gave my son an opportunity to be able to meet somebody and it was Dwayne edwards he was the head designer of jordan and wait 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 my son wait yes pause yes pause yes (laughs) what name did you just say Dwayne? Dwayne Edwards? Dwayne Edwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. my childhood friend. I grew up with Dwayne. In Inglewood. Oh, yeah? Nice. Yeah. That's hilarious. He has pencil. No yeah, pencil. He, yeah, he has yeah. pencil academy. Yeah. My son, uh, well, my husband knows him. We know him. We go visit him. Yeah, my son, <laughs> <laughs> my son actually did, um, he did sneaker design for him. I know. He was, I, he was I 10. <laughs> grew up in Inglewood. I talked to Dwayne on a daily basis. Oh, he's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I could tell you stories about Dwayne and how he got started and what he's doing for Penn State because he just opened up uh, Penn Lewis College. Like, yes. he is so, um, I mean, Amazing. that's a whole not, I'm going to actually have him on the show. Um, oh. Ooh, I wow. When he comes out here, let me know. We, we went out there. Uh, we went out there. He had my husband um, on, on a speaking engagement that he had did. And so my son, that, and that was exactly how we linked it up. So yes, my son has designed for Adidas and Converse, and he did the NBA jerseys mm. for the All Star Game last year. But it's like that's how that's how these kids get opportunity like right. this is by giving them mentors right. and linking them up with people. And for right. Dwayne to take a moment to help a ten year old kid. You know, and it's like, look at he's taking on these people like, oh, I want to be a sneaker designer. You know how many parents would be like, you want to be a sneaker designer? How are you going to yeah. be a sneaker designer? My, my husband was like, let's go do it. Let's go figure out how you're going to become a sneaker designer. And you know what's crazy? Because uh, I don't know. I mean, you probably know the story by now. A lot of people didn't know this, that before Dwayne opened up Penn Soul, there was not a sneaker design school. Nope. There's a fashion school, right? But there was nice. never a sneaker design school. Huh. So he opened up the first one, Pinso, and, and he partnered up with Park Parsons up in New York. And that's how he opened up Pinso. So what he does is he he teaches them about this and then they do like their externship yeah. out at these like at Converse yeah. and so he links them up and then from them growing there doing their externship, then they get hired in as it's amazing. So it's opportunity like that. We just so I'm trying to bring that out to the Animal Valley. Oh, my mind's already working. You know what? You and I, <laughs> it's crazy. So, you know, at the top of the show, 
uh, said that I knew of you and I always wanted you on the show. I always felt a connection with you. I didn't know what it was, but I was like, wow, I love what she's doing. Like, I need to yeah. link up with her. See, every, we all connected. And yeah, by something like that, that's crazy. Because he was that is crazy. <laughs> he was in Oregon for a while. He was yeah. at um, Nike. Oh, my God, we went to the campus. Yeah. Gorgeous. I mean, he still lives in Oregon, but he yeah, flies back and forth from D.C. now. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. No, he's amazing. If I could do something on that level with the kids in the Animal Valley. Oh, my God. But oh, you are. We are, though. Oh, oh but you are. are. No, we are. Yes. Oh, Just yeah. because you said that, and I'm going to put Dwayne on blast right now. <laughs> We're going to do something. Let's do yeah. it. 100%. Remember what did I tell you? What did yeah. I tell you today? This is just the beginning. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. little poppy no, should be the first me, one to have the sneaker uh, workshop out here. Me huh? and, uh, so it's six of us <laughs> that grew up in Inglewood and we're still tight. Like we text each other every day. Like we on this group there and Dwayne is one of them. He, you know, he taught me something years ago. Um, right. At, so he started off at LA Gear. Mm-hmm. And from LA Gear, I think he went to uh, Carl Kanai. But there was a shoe company and a company up in Boston that wanted to hire him, right? So one day he had to fly out to Boston, and it was just a day flight. To fly out to Boston and come right back, right? So me and my other buddy, uh, Derek, we was taking him to the airport, and Dwayne came out, um, and this is a lesson that he taught me years ago. He came out of the house, and he had on jeans and a jeans button-down and just some sneakers on, right? And we looked at him, and we was like, aren't you just going for a day? And he was like, yeah. It was like, where's your luggage? Like, you're going to the meeting, like, the interview is the interview, like that. And he was like, well, they're not hiring me for the way I'm dressed. They're hiring me for my skills. Ooh. And that's something that stuck in me. So now when I go places, people are always like, you can dress like that? I'm like, yeah, people, like, it's my skills. Like, <laughs> you're not hiring me for the way I yeah. look. I'm not a model. <laughs> it's so true. And everywhere he went, I mean, obviously we wear suits at certain right. places, right? Of and course. He does. But everywhere we, we went, like, we just dressed how we was. And it was like, he taught me a valuable lesson that day. Right. It's that so shit was true. crazy. Yeah, the last time I came in were with my Crocs and some fuzzy socks. Yeah. I was like, they're not going to see anything down here. But it's true because yeah. you do bring your talent and allow that to speak for you. To speak for yourself. And I tell yeah. people that all the time. That's why, like, even in my career, like, I've never done business cards. I've never done, like, promotions or anything. Like, I've always been an independent contractor, and that's why I never worked for anybody. But I've always let my work speak for myself. It's like, you want to hire me? Go look at my work. Like, I'm not going to sell myself. Because one, I'm not a salesperson, so I'm not going to sell myself. I hate selling. I hate convincing you. Mm-hmm. My work should convince you. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have to be here like a used car salesman and try to sell you on my work. If I'm working that hard to sell you on my work, then my work is not that Your good. Your work's not selling yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. 100%. It's so true. That's yeah. what I was sharing with him, too, is... Um, I go, hey, you better get you better get your your pricing ready, and then he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, you're not gonna do it for free. And then he's like, I'm trying to explain, like, no, like, this is just your beginning, so right. you need to know what mm-hmm. are you gonna charge, you know, and and what is it, and you know, and even like something like that, like I see I see vendors do that all the time, like, um, I don't think they're gonna pay that for that, so I'm not gonna price it at that. But it's like know your worth. Know but your no, worth. no, but, and, and, but it's a it's that's important. Know your value, and yes. I'm a, I'm gonna get to give you a real quick story because we are kind of running out of time. Cause we, we're almost at two hours right now, which is incredible. <laughs> oh, um, you topped it. You topped but me. But I want to give you a quick story. When I first started off, I had my own graphic design company, right? And the way I got into television was an uh, executive producer who was like my mentor, big brother to me, gave me an opportunity. He said, "Mike, I will pay you the price that you want." for doing this project because he wanted me to um, help him develop a TV show. He said, I will pay you the price that, that you want. It'll just be a one-off if you, if I go with your price or you can work with me and charge me little right now and work with me and I'll teach you everything I know. Mm-hmm. To this day. No, right. So I obviously took B <laughs> and worked <laughs> with him. Like, I don't even think I charged him like for that first project. Like, cause if you take the the value and the of the um, tools that I have that I learned from him, that value, like I couldn't have never charged him that much in that one off project. Mm-hmm. And to this day, I still work with him. Mm-hmm. Like, and he gave me my shot in entertainment, and I've learned. I met so many people through him. So many opportunities came through him. Mm-hmm. So you just got to know your your value and your worth. So even like when someone like wants to work with you. It's okay to like do free stuff because I've done a lot of free stuff in yeah. my time. But you got to know, like, if I'm doing something free for you, like, 
what's the value in that? Like you working with her. Right. Like I can see how, how if you don't charge her, but because look at a platform, look what she's giving you. Like look at that value. Don't always again. Don't chase money. Right. Chase your passion. Don't yeah. chase the money. Look at you got to look at the value of the whole picture. I think that's just like so hard for me to like comprehend because it's just like something that I just do for you know as a hobby, something that I enjoy doing. So it's like when someone's trying to pay me for it, I don't know how to like comprehend that. You know mm -hmm. how to accept that or how to put a value on my work or, you know what I mean? So I just kind of, I'm just in it for the experience. And, 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 and that's cool. Like right. and you, you're new. So do the, get the experience. And at some point you'll understand your value. You'll start to see it yeah. happen. Cause I, when I first started, I, I did, I, I, till this day, there's certain booths that I comp because for my own personal reasons. Right. And, um, but then there's some where you'll start to see like, um, Oh, maybe it's time, yeah. you know, it's time. And then that's what you're going to start to see. Okay, I think it, it might be time because you're, you, you have your foundation built and now you want to sit there and expand and do that because at the end of the day, yes, we don't chase money, but you need money for stuff. Right. You know, Absolutely, and for you yeah. to be able to do this, I, as much as I want to help these kids, I it's hard to buy all this stuff for them. But you know, as you can, so you you get where you can. But you know, that's not why I do it. You know, mm -hmm. so it's I I see that in you, and I, I from the moment I met you, so I'm excited for you because I feel like this putting this out there right now, it's going to be an opportunity for you, and we're going to be able to see where you started at, and one day we're going to say, look at what 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 he's built. I know, and and not just for, not just for us. But just like putting that platform for all these other vendors that, you know, don't know how to get to that next step. And, you know, you're just helping them get there, you know. So, I mean, it's a little bit of everything, you know. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. So what's next? Next. Like, oh. what, are you, what are you guys coming up for 2023? So we are going to be doing um, interviews tomorrow. We have an interview set up for tomorrow. We're really excited about that one. And then um, from there, it's really just getting the carpenter's daughter known, minors to majors, teaching people about the nonprofit, um, you know, asking for volunteers, for mentors, and, you know, just building up. Right now, we're currently doing a raffle for um, patients at City of Hope and the Kaiser Center. We have, you know, we just have a lot of stuff going on. So if you, if there is something on your heart that you feel that you want to help out in one way, but you don't know how, come on into Pretty Little Poppy, talk to me, and I promise either I will link you up with somebody or we'll brainstorm and come up with something amazing to help yeah. out. Yeah. Where we can. And, and we got a small business Saturday coming up. Oh, yeah. Come on, you got to yes. talk about that. Oh, my God, you guys. I'm so excited. Please, <laughs> we need to make this amazing. We house over 90 vendors in this store. So they're all small businesses. And we are going to have a pop up. We're actually bouncing off with the Boulevard. Okay. So the Boulevard has generously given us um, uh, $250 that we're adding on top of our $250. So we're going to have a $500 raffle going on. Nice. We're not selling the tickets. You come in, purchase from the vendors, and then. We'll add your name into the raffle. We're going to have uh, 26 vendors inside of there. So meet and greet with all of them. Now, is there a uh, specific number that they got to buy, amount that they got to buy to be entered into the raffle? Or? Just support them. Just support them. Nice. Just support them. And then, um, and then we have special guests that's going to be sitting on our crybaby couch, which is going to be Santa Claus. So he's going to come out there for the kiddos. And um, just come out and support these amazing vendors because once you start to hear them and their story, then you know you know that um, it's so much more. It's so much more. So that's wow. going to be November 26. We're going to be there from 12 to 4. Um, please come out. Um, like I said, we're always accepting vendors in the store. We're always doing pop-ups. We're going to have another one set for December 10th. Um, so if you – and if you – want to start a business and you don't know how but you know that you're there's something you can do come in because we will help you build that we're yeah. doing a logo design right now for somebody that no and it's true you know. and it's true everything she does say i will also co-sign that if you do have a vision if you have something that you're sitting on i i encourage you please 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 come see brenda a pretty little poppy and i'll say this for the youth for the kids please come see her she is she can be that that uh, that igniter of hope that you might need. So I'll tell, I I will see it on her behalf. She believes in you, and so do I. Well, well, Thank you. With that said, we are out of here, you guys. Thank you guys so much. And Brenda, wow.
Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you so much for providing that space for all these vendors, for the community. Truly appreciate it. Truly, truly appreciate you coming and telling your story. Thank you. Thank which you is for an letting amazing me story. Check off my bucket yes. list. And you know so, what? Before we go, I forgot oh. to say uh, thank you to James from Settle Realty for uh, taking care of me at Starbucks today over a simple conversation. Oh, nice. So I thought I'd say thank you to James. Nice. Thank, oh, you, James. thank you, James. Spread appreciate more love. That. Spread yeah, more yeah, love, yeah. guys. And where can they find Pretty Little Puppy Shop? Our address is 730 West Lancaster Boulevard, Suite 105. So we are neighbors to Brooklyn Dally across the street, um, the movie theater. So we are actually on Fig Street. And you'll see the black and white awning. Come on in. We're there Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 6 o'clock. And, um, yeah, you're going to be able to meet amazing vendors. We do services and we do booths. So services, so if you just want to advertise your business, you can do that. And then if you want to sell product, you can do that as well. Okay, and where are you on social media? I am on prettylittlepoppy.av for my Instagram. And then we have our Pretty Little Poppy Facebook page as well. And we are growing, so stay tuned. Oh, you guys definitely go support Pretty Little Poppy, uh, especially Small Business Saturday, November 26th. (laughs) Um, they're going to be out there in full force. Yes. Yeah. Any last words for you? Be well, everyone. Be Although well. Although we struggle, be well. struggle well. Hey, and be flourish. well. That's, That's the right. Gotti way. That's right. <laughs> be well. I love that phrase, though, the Gotti way. <laughs> the Gotti way. Love it. All right, y'all. We out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.